Alrighty, so, good evening, everyone. I am going to be going over lessons at the moment. Going to be, I am here with my little buddy here, Shelby Nation. I'm going to uh, do some critiquing of his play to, in order to help him improve and all that jazz. But, so, essentially, what we're going to do first is, um, gonna play a best of three set and um, basically I'm just gonna like study you while we play okay and after that I'm going to point out all the things that I feel you need to work on the things you are doing right and all that jazz I'm gonna go from there make sense okay cool beans uh, hold on just a second let me post this finger my bobber thing for dang how long have I had this thing it's, it's been a, it's been a good good hot minute it's been a really long time I know right this background music is amazing Practice, my friend. Practice. Alrighty. I recommend it. That way, um, you have replays and junk. You can post them and all that jazz. But that's gonna confuse me very, very much. So I'm gonna just not have my headphones on my ears, cause I can hear the game sound. Confuse me. Cause like it's like a slight delay. So I know I'm gonna sit there and hear some like uh, this is this throwing me off. Anyway, I'm gonna play I actually you know what? I'm gonna play Mark. Yeah, see like it's so which stage are you gonna go to first? Okay. FD. Alright, let's do this. Wait, were you trying to go to the, um, how in this temple? Oh. I mean, they're both Kid Icarus stages, so it's an honest mistake. No But see, there's one thing you learned right there. We haven't even started yet. Survival! Yeah. Yeah, this is the this is the best Omega in the game. It's just so look at that Come <laughs> on. 
All right, where do you want to go for game? Alrighty, let's go. Every if you do okay, so off the top of my head, one quick thing I am noticing. Um, there are a lot of times where, I mean, you were doing a little bit better about it, but there are a lot of times where you would just like run up at me and then just hit my foot. Um, the thing about Roy is that his grab game is like insanely good, so honestly, you should be going for grabs often. Because more often than not, his reward off of grabs is just insanely good. Like, Boy! if Roy gets a grab, he's taking his opponent for a ride. Because what Roy wants to do is he wants to be able to force the opponent into a situation where their options are limited. So he can then capitalize off those options. Like, okay, let's say you use forward throw and they hit the ground, so they have to either tech, or so they have to tech. So their options are either not tech, but if they don't do that, you can you know, hit them with dash attack and kill them. If they tech in place, you can use forward smash. And it's like, it's honestly just a matter of guessing. Okay, I've limited their options to one of like four things. Which one do I think they are going to do? And sometimes you might want to use dash attack and not even go for a punch just to pay attention to, okay, I did that move and they did this. So next time I throw them, I'm going to op act with that idea in mind. Because that's what I do a lot of times. Like, that's okay. For, one of, for example, one of your habits was when you would get knocked off stage, you would use your double jump pretty much immediately. So like, I would not throw you off stage, and then I would just jump up and forward. Yeah. Yeah, because it was a habit that you showed, and I like, held on to that. So, because the thing is, Roy can... Roy can condition people like that as well. They can also operate in a similar function. So, like, we're gonna go to Smash Bros. We're gonna, like, basically, we're gonna have, like, play neutral to show, like, essentially what Roy can and can't do in neutral. Like, um, you use, like, you use Forest Smash a lot. Like, a lot. Now, okay, like, 
one of Roy's main movement options is like dash dancing back and forth. Because, okay, let's put it to you like this. Which way am I about to go? Like, look at my character. Which way am I about to go? You can't really tell. Because it's like, I can go, I can decide at any given time, oh, okay, I'm gonna go this way. Or I can decide I'm gonna go this way. You know? It's like, but the thing is, this is kind of hard to do, so what a lot of people do is they'll just like sh short hop fast forward. Because the thing is, I can also decide at any point, okay, I'm doing this in place. You can still sort of have to guess which way I want to go. So let's say like, oh, and I can just like, I can be, sh you know, short hop fast fall right here, and then I can just run in and run in and grab somebody or something. Like that. Run in and move in neutral or something. Or I might just decide I'm gonna just grab myself and you know, I'm gonna grab myself and you know. Now, another thing I feel as though you should work on, because I do feel as though you have a good, um, good grasp on how to play the intro to some extent, because it's like you have a lot of habits that you can do that are not that aren't really, they're very comfortable, like, okay, like that, like, okay, hit my, like, okay, use forward smash, and then hold the shield, like, I want you to see how long it takes for the shield to control. use forward smash, and just hold shield, use forward smash, and hold shield, no, that's not forward, that's forward, right? Like, this one. Right here. Like, okay, see how long I'm holding the shield immediately after. You see that huge window where I can't do anything? So it's like, yeah, yeah, this move will kill. He's maybe in there playing werewolf with them, but my understanding is he went with um, John down to the pool. But yeah. What was I gonna say? Oh, okay, but like, yeah, forward smash kills, but so pretty much like all your hits. Like, pretty much all of them. Like, you can, like, this move kills. Yeah, that move kills. This move kills. This move kills. Um, up B kills. Like, you have other killing options. And the thing is, like, down throw is. It's an alright option for a grab anyway. Because the thing is, like, okay, like, come here. Like, come use down throw. Use down throw. You see that angle? How I'm, like, really close to you? So, like, I have to, like, like, at that point, like, you could do this, and then, like, at low percent, you get that. But at high percent, you can get, like, down throw to four air or something like that. Or like you get um, like if they don't DI away, you get down throw and then like that. Now forward throw? Input forward. <laughs> You're yeah, you can like that. Okay, so like I'm looking at your controller. Yeah, like that. That's back in now back throw specifically, the purpose of back throw is basically like, yeah, like you want to get him off stage so you can set up an edge guard. Because the thing about Roy as a character is that his recovery isn't really like, um, it's his, one of his weak points. So if you're fighting Roy, uh, I would like you want to get him off stage because that's one of the most effective ways to kill him. Now another thing you I don't see you using at all is, okay I want you to shield. You see Jab? Now I want you to try and shield grab me. While you're shielding, you just press A and you'll cancel it into a grab. Now wait for it to wait for it to um, finish loading. Like wait for it to regenerate. For you. But like, um, but like okay, so press shield. Now I want you like when I hit your shield, I want you to try and shield grab. Me, okay. What are you doing? Yeah. Shield grab. So. 
What, what do you use the um, oh, shield? Here it is. Uh, shield grab, you just press this. What are you doing? That's all you're doing. Like you don't you don't let go of shield and then press A. It's literally just press A. Like literally just um because the thing is you ever notice how like you'll hit my shield and you'll get grabbed like immediately. Three, yeah. Two, one, yeah. Go. Like okay, I want you to dash deck my shield. Now, um I want to uh, face me. Turn around. Alright, so shield, when I hit your shield, I want you to try and shield grab. You see how you couldn't grab me? Because I'm spaced out. Now, this is your jab. Now, the thing about jab and what you should use it for is specifically to hit shield, okay, to see what they do. So you can keep that in mind. Like, okay, so, like, okay, hit my shield with jab. So, spot dodge. If you notice, okay, when I hit his shield, he spot dodges. Next time you could do like this, and then that. She says that would have to spot dodge, and it's a hard punish. Or let's say um, you hit my shield. You notice that they jump away. Now I want you, when I hit your shield, I want you to jump up, okay? Catch him with the forward air. Now um, let's say, okay, after I hit your shield, I want you to roll back, okay? But the thing is, you don't want to immediately, I mean you can, but the thing about it is, okay, let's put it here like this. If I know that, oh, if I do this, I get hit for it, what do you think I'm going to do? Exactly, I'm going to stop doing it. But let's say I do something and nothing happens. I'm going to feel safe, right? I'm going to feel like this is an option that is okay for me to take. So I'm going to naturally keep doing it. So what I like to do a lot of times is I might notice that, like, okay, for example, you have a jumping habit. I might notice that you have a jumping habit and then go, okay, I'm not going to punish you. Because if I punish you, I would just get damaged. And while you want to add percent, but ultimately the goal is to kill them, right? So naturally, let's say I get you in that situation again, but now you have a kill percent. So now when you jump, I get you with a kill move. You want to do that because the thing about it is Roy's dash attack is a kill move. So, like, let's say you okay, like, for example, I want you to roll towards me this time, like, after I hit the shield. Hold up. Roll, roll after I hit the shield. Now, the thing about double edge dance, yeah, the fire, yeah. Like, okay, like, okay, like, for example, like, okay, you see I'm facing this way? If I notice they're behind me, I can use side view this way and catch them. Or, alternatively, I'm gonna hit your shield and then roll towards me. Are you starting to understand, like, more so, like, the type of things you should be going for? Now, another thing you, I feel you have to improve upon is, like, your conversion after you win neutral. Like, okay, let me, like, you're at 14%, so... Now, I want you to, like, legitimately try to get away after I, um, like, get in. So, essentially what this is called, this is called the disadvantage state. When you're fighting to get back to safety, when you're fighting to get back to safety, you're at disadvantage because you are being hit. You're trying to get back to you. But like, okay, essentially like, you see how like when I, what did I do? I think I like threw you off stage or something. And I basically just like, I pressured you to the point where you, you I put you in a position where your options were extremely limited because of that instance right there at the Smashville platform, you were off stage and you're essentially like you were far enough where it was kind of unlikely that you would make it back to the stage. So your safe haven, for example, was that platform. So naturally, you would try to jump to that platform. 
Knowing that, I jumped up the corridor to catch them jumping. You limit their options to put them in a situation where, okay, this is part, like, you think of it from this perspective. What would I do if I was in that situation? I know I wouldn't just drift down to my death. I would try to recover, right? But, so with that in mind, I know, okay, they're going to try to jump. So what can I do to punish them for taking that option? So essentially, like, I typically go, what is the best option to take in, this, in, in a given scenario? And I make my plan based around that. But, all to but on top of that, I don't just do that. I focus on what have I seen that this person likes to do. You get it? Like, okay, for example, I'm going to play a game with um, Jordan real quick. So you can see, like, um, let's take a look. Okay, so I'm going to show, like, Mario! it doesn't matter who you are. Like, totally. like, you want to play more? Actually, pick your name. You didn't say your name. Survival! But anyway. I recommend you play somebody you know how to play with. Alright, so, I'm gonna play a game on Smash for a real quick. But anyway, like, pay attention to how we interact in the neutral, so you can understand my dumb. Um, yeah. The neutral is when, like, neither of you are in that disadvantage state that I mentioned earlier. <laughs> The thing about like um, characters with disjoints and characters that do not have disjoints is that a disjoint isn't a hurt box. But like as you said, the, um, describe Mario as a up close character. He is most definitely a character like that because um, he's a character that he, when he extends a hitbox, he also extends a hurt box. Because okay, let's put it to you like this: if I have my sword, right? Let, let's say my hand is my sword. If you hit my hand not hitting me because you're hitting my sword and that's not a hurt box. As opposed to Mario where let's say he like um, his back air. Because you notice like when I play Mario I use back air a lot because that's his like furthest reach to move. And it's how I like space people out in order to like, you know like because the thing is like a lot of things that I like to do is I like to hit people's shield just to see how they react. So I can form a plan of what I'm going to do in the match. Um, I grab if I notice people are shielded. Because right? the thing is, because the thing is, like, um, a lot of times I find it's a lot easier to. Because the thing is, I don't actually have to make up a completely new plan every time I fight. Because it's just a matter of, okay, if this situation occurs, I already know to do this. So if I notice they're grabbing a lot, I mean, if I notice they're shooting a lot, I know to grab. If I notice they're jumping a lot, I know to anti air. If I notice they're, um, if I notice they recover low, I'll go off and like, you know, go for like a downer or something. If I notice they recover high, I'll jump up and cast their jump with like a forward air or something. If I notice they stay on the ledge too long, you know, because you notice how I do ledge drum back air where I just get on the ledge, force you off and then I'm back air, you die. I do that if I notice, okay, they stay on the ledge too long. If I notice that, okay, because they're scared of getting ledge drum, they roll on stage immediately. 
I'll like catch that with like, okay, oh, they're going to roll, so I'm going to stand by the ledge, and then as soon as they get to ledge, because I know they're immediately going to roll, I'll up smash them or something like that. Pretty much. Exactly. Because the thing about it is, because the thing is my particular playstyle focuses a lot on making my opponent fear, feel pressure. Because the thing is, when people feel pressure, they feel nervous. And when people feel nervous, they choose defensive options more often. And typically, when it comes to defensive options, I typically know the type of things that people go for when they are scared. Because typically, if you're getting hit, your natural response is, I don't want to get hit no more, right? So, typically people will either jump or they'll roll or whatever. And because I know how to punish those options, I typically just go, okay, which option do you like going for? And then I'll, yeah, based off of that. His bagger? Yeah, that's his bagger. I mean, because the thing about Mario is that he is like the combo character. And so a lot of times his moves, like, they lead into a bunch of different stuff. Yeah, Mario is like custom combo the character. <laughs> Well, yeah, because another thing that people will do is when you run up at them, a lot of times they'll choose an option. And so, like, sometimes I'll, like, run up at you and shield just to see what you do. And that that way, because I'm shielding, let's say you were to, if you see me get close to you, you're the type of person who, whenever I get close, you throw out an attack. Now you've hit my shield, and so now I have the advantage. Because you still have to deal with the um, recovery frame from your attack. But to counter this, moves that are typically safer on shield. Like okay, like um, like for example here, like with Roy. Roy. Uh, yes, he's a lot heavier. He's a lot heavier. He's slower. He, um, he hits harder. His he has a little bit like his. He's basically more. Yeah. But like, and you don't really need it because I'm just gonna show you like some basic things. Like, okay, like shield. Like, okay, you see how I'm like fading back with these attacks? And also like. Now, Roy, another thing that Roy does really well is um, what I like to call frame traps. And basically what those are is, um, let's say, it's basically a situation where, okay, um, okay, like for example, like down throw leads to a lot of frame traps. Because what you can do is like, you like, let's say, it's more so confident like at higher percent, but like, um, Like, okay, you notice how, like, I did down throw and you air dodge my forward air, but you still got hit? Because the thing is, you can, um, you can do, like, forward air to up air. Like, you see how, like, I'll miss one move and then I'll just use the other one and it'll catch me. That's basically what's known as a frame trap, where, okay, you can air dodge the forward air, but because you air dodge the forward air, you just ended up getting hit with the up air, which led into the other move. Or alternatively, because the thing is, you can also do that on the ground. So like, no with, like with, um, because the thing is, most of his frame traps are based off of his forward air. So, he might air dodge the forward air, and then, but you're close to the ground, so you can actually just use side jump, and you'll land on the ground, and you won't have ending lag, and you'll be able to do stuff like that. Yes, Roy is a very combo-based character, but like, um... Like, okay, so Shelby, Big Roy, Jordan. Yeah. Well, because um, it was him, I told him I would do a lesson for him. 
So, focusing on him right now, I might do you that, give you guys each the same treatment another day, so you guys can, because essentially, I know it helps a lot when you have somebody to specifically tell you what exactly Three, you can work on and what you can do better. One, like, okay, like, because essentially, yep. Now, um, I basically just, I want you to like, just play neutral, so you can try to understand, like, the type of things that you have issues with. Uh, I don't, haven't seen a brown book bag in here. Did you check in the gym? Time, what I do is I just like um because the thing is I use a lot of short hop aerials so it's very easy for me to make people think that I'm going for an aerial and a lot of times um, because of that that was actually that was good yep. Well, from there, yeah, they're from the same series. Now, the thing about um, side B is that it's typically your fastest punish option. It's typically your fast, um, fastest punish option because, okay, I can, like, anytime I see you do something, I can just side B in your direction. So real quick, I'm gonna point out a habit you seem to have. Um, but do you notice how like every single time I've countered countered you at the ledge twice? What would you say that your habit is if I feel confident enough to keep it? Exactly. Every time I get off the ledge. You just run in and attack. Is there, a, is there an issue you feel you are having in that matchup? Like, what would you say was the most difficult part about that? Oh, oh my goodness! I give you a cheat sheet. Cheat sheet. Bleh. My 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 but basically, the thing about Roy is, yeah, he's super fast, and he, when he does get in, he can really, he can get you to hand. But the thing is, his issue, please don't do that, please don't do that, is that he has trouble getting in. Because the thing is, Roy, while he does have a disjoint, he's kind of one of those up-close characters. Because his disjoint is like, is that little dagger. <laughs> As opposed to Mark, who has that really long sword. So if we're both trying to play the spacing game, I'm typically going to be able to do it better. Get it? Yeah. So now I'm going to fight Jordan with Roy. Actually, no. I want to see you fight Jordan. Yeah, that's what I'm Mario! Yep. Huh? Yeah, we can do that later. Don't distract them, please. So, what are you doing in neutral that is different from what I was doing in neutral? You are very reliant on forward tilt as a neutral tilt. Remember what I said. Like, you can make use of your short hops and, um, you know, jab more and use grabs. You don't use grabs at all. Now, it went, like, at low percents like this, when you use, um, down throw, you honestly just want to, like, just stand there and see what they do. And, like, um, if, like, let's say they air dive, you can just, um, down throw. You can just down throw on the side beat. You want to get better. Thanks, man. Now, 
Now, real quick, Shelby, because I have to ask. What does he like to do when, when he's at the ledge? Hmm. What can you do in response to that? Huh? You can jump in forward air. You don't have to go off stage, just jump up in the air. Oh my goodness. That's because you fast fell afterwards. One thing I feel as though you need to do more, because the thing is, I feel as though your movement isn't, it doesn't feel natural. You aren't, like a lot of times your movement, you feel like unsure of how you should be moving. You can't confidently go, but the fact that you don't feel comfortable on stage is a testament to that. Or even just like looking at how you move on the stage in general. That shows me that you don't really understand how you're supposed to be moving. You get it? So it's like you have to really like, that's something that comes with practice. Because it's like if you know, if you are confident in knowing that like, okay, this is how I move around the stage, you won't feel nervous like doing certain things. So it's like, it just comes from like practice and like, um, cause the thing is like, you gotta practice short hops, you gotta practice fast falls, you gotta practice all that jazz. Yeah, really okay, like real quick, I want you to practice short hop and fast fall. So that's full hop. Just tap it, just tap it, just tap it, just tap it. Okay, like, look at my hand. Like, okay, like, look at Roy. You see that little star that appears when he goes down? That's how you know you're... Yeah, that's how you know you're fast falling. Now you see like when I'm short hopping, I'm not doing this. I'm not even doing that. It's just, a, it's like literally just a tap. I want you to practice fat, short hop fast fall. No, no, just... Okay, so you jump and then like... When you're at the, you know, when you're close to the top of the jump, then press down. No, make sure you short hop. There you go. And then when you hit the ground, just jump again. You get it? Wait for you to hit the ground and then jump again. It takes practice. You might be pressing down too early. It's one of those things where it's just like you need to, uh, it takes practice getting used to it. But the thing about practicing all these different movement options is because you're practicing how to execute them, you're significantly less likely to execute them on accident because your muscle memory already knows how to do that option. So it also knows how not to do that. It makes sense. Yeah. Most definitely better than all. I know. Jordan is most definitely better than all. But the difference is that Jordan Jordan is a ghost. He doesn't practice. That's the thing, it's like you don't have to. Because the thing is, like, have you guys noticed that, like, I don't take this home with me? Yeah. You don't have to practice all the time. It's just a matter of, like, because the thing is, a lot of people have a misconception that you have to practice for, like, eight hours a day every day in order to sort of get through. I mean, yeah, but it's like, because the thing is, it's not so much about um, how often you practice, but it's more so about consistency. Yeah. I mean, because the thing is, you're not going to learn everything all at once. It's like, it's a process. Like, what, like every time you practice, you should have a goal of what you want to, like, improve on. Like, like you want, like, let's say, like, okay, for example, because like, one thing I, like, okay, like, for example, one of my things I wanted to practice was legend. So I might play, like, go to play for an hour. Like I might play for an hour. I might play for an hour with the idea of going, okay, I'm 
going to, every time they're at ledge, I'm going to attempt to ledge drop. And so naturally, because I'm attempting it in a... That's not going to kill him. You, well, there's get up... The, you, when you're at the ledge, um, I think you have... Actually, it's like... Yeah, you can... It is because the thing is, your ledge invincibility only lasts for a short amount of time. And when it runs out, if they're still on the ledge, then yeah, you can hit them. Well, no, no, no. It actually takes a really long time for you to, like, fall off the ledge. But, like, essentially how the ledge works is, like, when you first grab the ledge, you have invincibility. And then, um, from there... Okay, you see how we started flashing the ledge? He had invincibility. And then from there, he can choose to do a normal getup. He can roll off the ledge, he can do a ledge jump, or he can do a get effect, or he can just sit there on the ledge. And typically, like there are countermeasures to almost every option. I mean, the thing is, it's like, it's just a matter of, because the thing is, you should, like, there is no best get up option. Like, the best get up option is one that they don't expect. I mean, from the top of my head, you like to jump off the ledge. Because, I pay attention to that stuff. Yeah, because the thing is... That's the thing, it's like... You, like I said, it's not necessarily that there's a bad get-up option. It's just that, um... It's just that, what is there? Not necessarily that there's a bad get up option, it's just that if you do the same thing over and over again, you're likely going to get punished for it because people will know, okay, he's going to do this, so I'm going to do this to catch that. Huh? I can't hear you. Well, you, no, you can air dodge though. So, Shelby, I want you to pay attention not to, like, how I kill people, but look at, like, look at what the first thing I do when I, like, start a match is. Like, what am I doing? Like, not when I'm hitting people, but look at, pay attention to what I'm doing when I'm not hitting people. Basically, like, pay attention to what I'm doing in order to get those hits. Yes. Now, the thing about most players is that they, different characters have different movesets, but a lot of players have the same habits. A lot. Of, um, you want to play? Actually. Oh, you're gonna see. Because the thing is, like, a lot of times I feel that you guys. Like, you guys don't know what to do in neutral, I feel. Or, like, how to really 
Like, okay, you guys also don't understand, like, the advantage state. Like, okay, like, um, one thing I know she'll do, you'll, like, you guys will, like, get one hit, and then you'll back off. I mean, but that's the thing. Why are you scared? You're the one hitting them. They're the ones that are scared. Exactly. But that's the thing. It's like, yeah, at high percentages, you don't want to, you don't want to go for things that aren't true. Like for example, like um Okay, you ever notice how when you guys get off stage, I go off stage and force you to not make it back? I don't let you come back. I think that I notice you guys do a lot is when I'm off stage, you just sort of wait there and wait for me to come off. And that's not necessarily a bad strategy if you know the proper way to do it. Because the thing about waiting at the ledge is like typically that the purpose for that is to cover get up options. But if you guys aren't paying attention to how I like to get on the ledge, it's you know it's not beneficial for you to um just wait there like that. Time to go. Hey you. Like, you know, like, okay. Do you feel panic whenever I get a grab on you? Like, okay. How, like, what, what is your objective when you get grabbed? To get away from me, right? You want to get away from me. Basically, you, like, because the thing about the disadvantage state is that, um, because the thing is, Mario has a pretty strong advantage state. He's a character that's honestly a lot like Roy, except he has a lot, much better neutral. Maybe eight. Yep. Yep. You gotta take care of yourself, man. Sure. I'm gonna see how you deal with Sonic. You wanna see? Not, it's not on today because the internet wasn't like running too well. Yeah, I know. It's sad. You don't get to have the, the legit skins. Typically, the person in shield acts slightly slower than the person who is not shield. Like, okay, for example, like right there, he was falling, you were falling towards him, and he was charging up for How did you just, like, fall into his up man? You were trying to hit him. So, what you should have done there is to just. Essentially, because the thing is, you can't charge the smash back forever. Oh, it's fine. So basically, you want to, when you're in the disadvantage state, you should go 
focus on getting hit. Because if you keep getting hit, you're gonna die. Protect those. Protect those, dog. You got stretches. Cameron's on the go. Cameron's on the go. Pressure. On the go. You can't up B after, uh, like, you can't up B after, after you use an attack. So essentially, like, you should be careful about doing that on stage. Because the thing about using an attack with Sonic after he up B's and it, like, it put, he goes in the free fall afterwards. I mean... I mean, that's the thing. It's like, don't focus too much on winning. Focus on doing like certain options better you know? like because the thing is you're not gonna get better at short hopping or like side be canceling if you don't actually try to do it you get me like sure sometimes you might mess it up sometimes but yeah because like sure you might mess it up sometimes but it's like yeah you gotta try it and now that i mean you say that but he was body in law last time i was playing yeah you were yeah, you were. You were in that circle. Yeah, you did. That's why I had to play him. He beat all y'all. Yeah, he did. Dog, I, do you want me to pull up the recording? So, real quick. Shelby, what does he like to do when you hit him? So, what can you do to deal with that? Um, well, I mean, that's a smash attack, so smash attack is have a lot of lag, so what you can do a, a bit more, like, you probably run in and hit him after that. But that's gonna happen. Go ahead, yeah, play another one. Okay, yeah, so it's still fine. Okay, yeah, it's definitely going fine. No drop frames. <laughs> 